It's going to be a good week. This place, this city, has never been associated with Italy's storied footballing history. When you think Calcio, you think Milan, Turin, Naples, Rome. Venice does not cross your mind. The city itself is a collection of 117 islands scattered across a large lagoon connected by 177 canals and 409 bridges. It is known for its beauty, its art, its architecture, its long storied history as a center of trade and commerce, not Calcio. But a new ownership group has come in to take over Venezia Football Club and it is being led by the ambitious American attorney Joe Takapina who has a habit of making noise everywhere he goes. His goal? Turn the club into one of Italy's best teams and one day win the Scudetto. You know, to see that's not really synonymous with football in the Italian vernacular. That being said, it's Venice. And when you think about Venice, you're talking about the most beautiful city in the world, the most unique city in the world a city that is one of the most important cities in the world. Right there, I knew there was something in that, in that elixir. And the more I thought about it, the more excited I got about it. Venezia Football Club was founded in 1907 and has spent much of the time bouncing between divisions, while their greatest success was winning the Coppa Italia in 1941. In 1987, the original club merged with the mainland Venetian side Mestre, a process that had its critics, but together, they took the club back to Syria, where they lived out their glory days playing the likes of Juve and Milan week in and week out. They were most recently in the top division in 2002, but by 2015, the club was floundering in Serie D, due to a string of bankruptcies at the hands of domestic and foreign owners, with a changing fan base very cautious about buying into yet another outsider ownership group. Without uh, the new American ownership, uh, soccer, uh, football here in Venice will not exist anymore. We lost, the, the club lost uh, a lot of fans because uh, after free bankruptcy, a lot of people uh, disappear from the stadium and also uh, because of this long period we lost a, a generation. It's not easy to live here. We have different problems with the other city. Only citizens can know what means to live here, what means to work here. People here uh, have many, many things uh, to think about. And football, soccer, it's not the first thing. Venetians are fiercely proud. And while it hasn't come easy for the game to thrive in such a unique city, the American-led team is trying to change the footballing culture. And Takapina is familiar with building teams as an outsider. He, in fact, put together the American ownership group that purchased the always successful, but also debt-ridden giants of Roma in 2011, before then moving on to Bologna, where he was president of the club during their Serie A promotion campaign. Venezia's ambitious plans are a very different story, though. And this is a pivotal time for the club. They're currently top of the table in Italy's third division, Lega Pro, after winning Serie D last campaign at their first attempt. Soon, Venezia faced their biggest rivals to make a push up to Serie B, fallen powerhouse Parma, a club that has won European Cups but ran into its own financial disaster, finally declaring bankruptcy in 2015. Two ambitious clubs, but only one automatic promotion spot. And to ensure Venezia's progression, Takapina has hired top-level talent to take them up through the divisions. His first big hire on the sporting front was Giorgio Perinetti as sporting director, a man who has worked with clubs like Juventus, Roma, and was even sporting director at Napoli while Maradona was in Italy. People at first might be like, what, 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 have, they got, what have they got going on down there that, that's getting these people to, to buy into the project? Oh. What, what, what did it take to get him on board and, and join this project? Yeah. I mean, aside from the nude pictures of Giorgio that I have, um, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really my project and I explained to him where this is going to go. Yeah. And, and, you know, he, within an hour, he was on board, and, and I said to him, you, you know, I'll let you out of this. And he said, no, 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 if I agree to do this with you, I'm staying until we see this through. And I was pretty touched by that. I mean, I, I, you know, it was hard to understand, but, but at the end of the day, what he told me was, this is a legacy project for him. Venezia has a great story, a great tradition, a great culture as a city. And so this is what it is, it is also in sport, also in our sector specific of football. E questo consente di, senti, di sentire tutti quelli che lavorano per Venezia comunque importanti, comunque eh, attori di qualcosa di, di molto significativo e che può avere anche un grande futuro. Questo è lo stimolo che guida tutti e che consente di credere in quello che facciamo. 
The next piece of the puzzle was a new manager. Up stepped another man seemingly overqualified for the job, beloved World Cup and Champions League winner, Filippo Inzaghi. How did you get people in Zaghi uh, to buy <laughs> into this project? Well, the funny part of that story is we didn't get him to buy into anything. He called us. Really? And I really thought it was a candid camera moment. I really did. Perinetti called me and said, Joe, Pippo and Zaghi's on the phone. He seems to be our coach. And I looked at him and I said, oh, is he really? And I walked into his office thinking I was going to be speaking to John Goldman or yeah. John Tappanis or somebody else. And, and you know, it was, it was a moment where it dawned on me it was really Zaghi, a name that would instantly elevate the visibility of Venezia Football Club. And, you know, I didn't say yes immediately because I wanted to meet with him. He had nine months as a coach at AC Milan. That didn't go very well. Mm -hmm. AC Milan has been a mess in the last few years. And Zaghi is a new coach. So instead of just grabbing another job anywhere at the top level, he said, I bet on these guys that they're going to rise and, and bring Venice back to the top of Italian football. I'd like to be associated with that rise and, and quite frankly, be the coach that takes them there. I mean, this is Venice. We're not in, you know, some small town in central Italy that no one outside the country has ever heard of. This is Venice. And, and you know, everything we do is going to be looked at. Sort of a high risk, high reward situation, but yeah. that's sort of the personalities that I think do well in this business. But my, my first meeting with him, with him and Perinetti, I was shocked. I mean, he really knew every single player in this league. And he was instrumental with Giorgio in helping us, you know, select a, a team. And it's been, it's been great. Ma è quello che mi ha convinto è stato quello che mi hanno che mi ha detto il presidente e il direttore sportivo Perinetti, insomma, quando mi hanno incontrato, ho capito che c'era tanta voglia di fare bene, c'era grande stima nei miei confronti. Eh, non mi hanno voluto incontrare perché io dovessi dimostrare di essere pronto per il Venezia. Mi hanno chiesto se volevo allenare il Venezia, per cui lì ho capito che c'era grande stima nei miei confronti e io quando mi sento fiducia da parte di tutti do anima e corpo per la società per cui lavoro. Per cui sono molto felice e per me non conta la categoria, ma conta fare bene e, e sono molto felice di aver fatto questa scelta. With such influential sporting figures in place, the results have followed, and the rise up the divisions continues to gain momentum. The next step is rebuilding trust with the most important element of any successful club, the supporters. And some remain skeptical and disenchanted by the years of false dawns. People st still, even with your success along the way, must balk at the idea of, of Italian football ownership. Traditionally, right? It's been so volatile. Yep. You've seen so many big clubs fall and and there just wasn't a priority. We, we, we've spoken to people about even, even the past of Venezia being, you know, uh, this was a side project to get a construction project or bigger projects off the ground, social currency to get other things done. It was just a step along the way. Well, when we came here, we weren't sure. You know, Venice and football, and, you know, it wasn't, they didn't, they had families that had been neglected for 20 years. Um, and we just weren't sure what we were gonna get, what I was gonna get. And the first time we walked in this city, you didn't see a Venezia scarf, you couldn't see these colors anywhere. Walk around the city now with a Venezia scarf or a Venezia shirt or with me or with Dante or one of our directors and you'll see a level of appreciation that really is, 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 is touching. People believe in this project, really support this project. When If you, if you walk with Joe uh, in the city, in Venice or in Mestre, everyone wants to stop in, take a selfie take, and, they, and they thank you. Tacopina is doing a great job because he is trying to live as a Venetian and that is what the other uh, president didn't do. Penso che dopo tanti anni di delusione la gente ha ancora voglia, fame di vedere calcio a livello importante. Quindi penso che che ci sia un potenziale enorme e un po' alla volta si sta risvegliando questo amore verso questi colori. The people behind the scenes are the heart of Venezia's project. Takapina has tried to honor the traditions of the club by embracing the Venetians who have deep ties to the city while simultaneously implementing American business practices. The American approach, American sports business approach, uh, in many ways has uh, been adopted in England, has been adopted in Germany, and I think at least to some extent, that's why you've seen those leagues kind of, you know, surpass Italy. You know, it's still kind of this stagnant environment where we have an opportunity to be to be fresh and to be different. You know, when you talk about the locals, Dante and, and Veronica and Davide Brendeline, who were part of the old structure that they felt they were a gondola with no with no oars. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was uh, no no support, no direction. They were sort of keeping the the, the the thing afloat on their own. 
Um, to go from that to an organization where they, they see the rise every, every day, they see the interest globally, they, they see a, a, a plan that's going to make them proud to say, you know, we're part of an Exeter football club. A couple of them cried the first week we were there. And that's I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what did I do to insult them already? Tears of and joy? Just, and it was tears of joy. I said to them, why are you crying? Yeah because we're so happy, we feel like the handcuffs just came off. Wow. It brings a lot of energy, uh, positive thinking, and it push hard every day on every project, and this is great, it's really great. Change is happening every day at Venezia, and new opportunities highlight the club's most pressing challenge, growth. A new stadium is a top priority, but state-of-the-art facilities require space away from the rising tides and fragile islands, and that means moving to the mainland and away from the beating heart of the club, the Stadio Pierluigi Penzo. Many fans travel over an hour by boat to visit the beloved and historic Penzo, the oldest complete stadium in all of Italy, to soak in the views of the lagoon, canals, and dolomite mountains from the stands while watching the game. But many fans are also eager to grow into a new stadium to signal to the world that Venezia are ready to compete at the highest level. Change is difficult for any supporter, but so often, it's necessary. With the delicate infrastructure of the city that just keeps getting pounded and pounded by the elements, the water levels are rising and things are changing, we're in this old historic stadium where I'm starting to get that feeling where I kind of want to play again, you know, after speaking to the fans here in the area and feeling the passion and the pride they have for this club, for their city, it makes you just want to be part of it. And you can start to see exactly why they're getting everybody to buy into this super ambitious project. So during the research for this project, uh, we came across a Venetian proverb that translates to, if you always chicken out, you'll end up with your ass in the canal. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what does that mean to you within this city and, and your project? Basically, if you're afraid to do things, um, you're, you're not going to be able to achieve these heights. I mean, look, if you follow the usual path, you'll always be usual. You'll always be just run of the mill. To me, courage is the, the commitment to begin something without any guarantees of success. With, without being cocky or arrogant, we believe in ourselves and we know where we're going. Torna 
il sole sopra la città e tutto brilla di colore.